Um, one of the cross-cutting themes which popped up in this firework of uh, presentations uh, from uh, our 12 colleagues who introduced themselves is actually education, science education, education of their own children or being educated by their own children. Uh, it works in different directions. And uh, uh, Marianne and colleagues, we had planned for this plenary um, session, um, a major component of uh, uh, science and education, mm. postponed only, and then switched to the focus on COVID-19 for obvious reasons. So um, this will come back. Colleagues, um, if we were together in um, the Vatican Academy building, you would by now have uh, this gilded chain around your neck, hopefully handed to you by Holy Father Pope Francis, and it would have been um, a moment of your life. We cannot artificially create that virtually. This moment hopefully will come soon again when the pandemic is over, uh, but uh, uh, Marcelo and I warmly uh, congratulate you, virtually embrace you, and uh, welcome you to our academy. I had said in between that um, um, we shouldn't have just a one-way conversation, as exciting and entertaining and uh, stimulating as it was. If there's anyone, uh, two or three uh, um, questions or comments uh, would be welcome at this stage. And I see already William Phillips uh, raising his uh, little blue hand. Um, um, William, you have the floor and uh, two or three more can be taken on. Um, William, please. Well, thank you. Um, what a, a lovely uh, set of, uh, of self-introductions. I, I can think of questions for, uh, for everyone, but I would like to address my my question to uh, uh, Stefan Hell, uh, you have, and your colleagues have beautifully shown us that the previous understanding of what the resolution of optical microscopy was, was uh, uh, able to be surpassed tremendously. So that instead of, uh, of a resolution of hundreds of nanometers, as one might have expected in the old way of thinking, you've achieved resolution of just a few nanometers, as you said, the size of the molecule that is the, the fluorophore uh, in, uh, in your situations. What I'm wondering is, is there any fundamental limit to the resolution of optical microscopy? Uh, there are uh, uh, optical emitters that are uh, angstrom size rather than nanometer size, but we know that we can localize even atoms to uh, have their center of mass um, be known to something smaller than even the size of the atom, uh, is there a fundamental limit to how uh, good the resolution of optical microscopy can be? Um, yes, uh, it's a very good question, Bill. Um, the answer is, of course, there is a limit. And in the, in, the, in the case of fluorescence microscopy that we worked on, it's indeed the size of the molecule itself. Or to be more precise, it's the um, the range over which the two molecules will not act independently anymore. So once a molecule starts to interact with each other, say a molecule in an excited state interacts with another mo molecule that is in a ground state and a kind of tra um, transfer the energy from one to the next, there will be a sort of limit that comes in because you cannot distinguish the molecules by their states anymore. So once there is close interaction, there is no way of distinguishing them. So the fundamental, say, discovery of the field was that the separation should not be done by the focusing of light, but by the molecular state. And that puts, that puts the firm limit. This has nothing to do, literally nothing to do with the precision with which you can find out the coordinate of, the, uh, of a molecule or the center of mass of uh, an extended, say, emitting object. That can be done with ultimate precision say the tiny fraction of an angstrom of course uh, that's just the calculation of coordinate the decisive thing is the separation of the entities of the of the quantum systems so to speak 
And that clearly has a limit. So imagine a situation where um, we can actually think of, of single emitters. Uh, then uh, what I'm wondering is, um, can we think of the, uh, the emission of the light as being somehow localized or delocalized over the size of the atom. I mean, I was taught sure. to think of the emission as being uh, localized over the size of the antenna, which of course is not the case at all. Um, uh, sure. But it sounds to me what you're saying is that even the size of the atom is no limit if we uh, make it uh, so that it doesn't interact uh, with other, other atoms or molecules. Uh, I, I was saying that the interaction range is so the lim is the limit because you need to have you have need to have distinguishable states, and of course, if that's not possible anymore, then there is no way to distinguish. And once you have reached that level, there is no way of increasing the uh, increasing the res resolution any further. And and of course, as you're saying, the atom has its extent, and the molecule has its extent, uh, but. On average, of course, you can find, say, the average expectation value. That can be extremely sharp, as you all know. But of course, the range from which emission occurs, so to speak, is smeared out over, uh, say, in this case, uh, organic molecules, a pi conjugate um, electron uh, cloud, and um, and that is, of course, the, that is of course the range. But once once they interact, um, then this this distinguishability, of course, breaks down. It gets weaker and weaker and weaker and eventually breaks down. So in essence, we are now down to, um, to, to uh, say molecular distances as long as we can make the molecules behave independently. Right. Thanks. So once much. they, once they are there is right. a, sorry, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, colleagues, uh, have a workshop. You're welcome soon. Elaine Fuchs uh, addressing Francis uh, Arnold. Yes, so I love your approach of designer chemistry to come up with these new avenues to treat uh, whatever nature is confronting us with. And my question to you is how rapidly you are able to create these designer avenues. And perhaps we could use as an example, this Asian giant hornet that is threatening the, the bee population Will you be able to design and come up with strategies quick enough to be able to save the bees, I guess, that, that kind of general uh, question? I'll, I'll try to make it short, and thank you for the question, Elaine. Evolution works at all scales, from molecules to ecosystems. I apply it to creating molecules in the test tube, and their evolution can be made very quickly, right? It can take just a day or two per generation. That means we can create enzymes, catalysts, to make all sorts of interesting new molecules. Now, when it comes to insect, making insect pheromones, nature has already done that, right? So in that case, we don't need to re-engineer the enzymes so much as to put them together, for example, in a yeast, so that the yeast can make these molecules quickly. It turns out, however, that mating disruption is not effective for all species. So for example, locusts, a huge problem in affecting uh, the third world, for example, but uh, it's not clear that, that mating disruption will help that. So I hope that helps to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um,